Alright, uh, picture? It is indeed picture. Oh, yeah, we'll take D please. D, no worries. Uh, we will start up that end. Nice. Amazing. Cool. Okay, and Giesler, one of the captains of Hills, uh, your tournament rough one against uh, in pool play against uh, Zig Theory. You're now into a quarter. What's the goal here? Well, we're playing our friends from NSU, and we've had a bit of a um, up and down with them. They took our top seed at regionals, so we'll take in this as uh, just as a revenge match. A bit of a grudge match. You've got a couple of players out with COVID. Correct, correct. Yeah, we lost four on Monday. Hopefully, we'll get at least two back tomorrow and they're all watching us now so we got the support all right thank you for your time Anne. Uh, izzy we'll go to you now a massive win yesterday on the yes. live stream overcoming uh, melbourne phoenix how were the girls feeling this morning this morning you know we were ready we were ready to start another day but new day new new tactics new team you know we want those connections to be there um oh yeah we're just going full steam ahead and this game now against hills very important one this is an opportunity to do better than last year Oh, a hundred percent. Yeah, we've been training with Hills. You know, very familiar with their with their tactics. They do like to throw some new things on us every time we see them. So I'm keen for for what they have, and hopefully we can uh, take the take the lead in the win. Okay, thank you, Izzy Bath. Uh, good luck for the game. Thank you. When we come back, we'll be back with your commentators. Ultimate is a non-contact team sport, with seven aside on the field and played with a flying disc. The field is 100 metres long, including 18 metre end zones and is 37 metres wide. A goal is scored by completing a pass in the end zone. Ultimate is self-refereed. Players are responsible for upholding the rules and for resolving fouls and violations themselves. Each point starts with a pull. Teams line up in opposing end zones and the defensive team will throw to the offensive team to start play. After every goal, teams swap ends. The team that scored starts the next point on defense. The disc is moved around the field by throwing it to teammates. Once players have the disc, they set a pivot foot like netball or basketball and can't move from there. Players have 10 seconds to throw the disc. This is counted out loud by the closest defender. An incomplete pass is a turnover, no matter who touched it last. When a foul or violation call is made, players will discuss whether they agree on what happened. If they agree, the call is uncontested and the fouled player retains possession. If they don't agree, the call is contested and play resets to where the last completed pass was. If a player anticipates a collision with another player, they can call pick to pause the play. If the pause didn't affect the outcome of a throw, play resumes. If it did affect the outcome, play resets to the last completed pass. First to 15 goals wins the game. However, at 80 minutes, time cap is called and the score target is reduced to one more than the current winning score. For example, if the score at time cap is 12-10, the new target score is 13. You can't run the clock down. Teams have to score the last goal to win the game. And welcome back to your weekend KO freebie. Wonderful Sunday afternoon here in Nelson Bay in the area of Port Stephens. Women's quarter final action. We're into the big ones. Leanne. So Leanne King here with Simon Tolbert to bring you this game. Welcome to the game. It's going to be a good show of athleticism here this afternoon. We've got a local derby here. NSU Aurora versus Hills. Quite a rivalry developed between these two over the season. NSU got the win at the Eastern Region Championships over this team. So coming to the tournament with the number one seed. The pool play results are a bit all over the place and we've got them facing off in the quarterfinal. We see Sarah Perkins with Hills with the first pull of the game and we are underway. NSU in the white, Hills in the green. Hills with his own look. Lane to Bath. Buryak. Big loopy over the top to Lane. 
to Lamb. Happy taking risks and Bath runs herself underneath it. And we have our first turn of the game. Sarah Perkins, a well seasoned competitor. Her first season with the Hills Club. Winds up, launches a long shot, looking for Parker. Kilniax, but incomplete pass. Lamb with a big loopy throw. Looking for Ricard's tang. Takes her time. They're not afraid to go over the top, but very measured over the top throws Leanne. Yeah, they're trying to find the spaces in the zone. And a big, long, over-the-top shot by Jarman. She was looking for Katia Buryak, who's put in a few yards at this point. I'd say neither team are going to be afraid to look deep, look for bigger throws. Early on in a game like this, you're really you're comfortable playing for territory. You sort of you want to tell the defence, hey, we're going to take those shots if you don't respect it, to really force them to spread out a bit as Milo. Takes a long shot of her own to Sandy, uh, to Rachel Poon. Both teams definitely have the throwing power to be able to back that strategy up. Geisler sings a leading pass to Gemma Garland, and Garland had a look and thought, that might be to someone else. It's a bit far for me, but no such luck, Bath. Direct lady shot out to that topside wing. Again, the NSU receivers happy to just hang on to it. Lane, happy to hang on to it. Wait for the zone defense to do the work. They're not in any great hurry. Bath now, top side. You can see the zone really trying to uh, cut them off. And Tegan Parker, Kilniax for Hills getting that one run through block. Good read of the play. Perkins to Poon. And looking back in board. The guys are another one out of reach. We're going to see a couple of like, it's game three of the day, Leanne, for these teams. We're going to see a couple of those go out of reach, I think. Okay, uh, game three of today, second day of the tournament. There's definitely some miles under all these legs. Lane to Bath. Bath having a look towards the end zone, but no one's moving for her, so. Gained some yards with Lane. They've, the zone defense really tries to pin them on that top sideline. Bath. Says, doesn't matter. We're going to sling it anyway. And May Lee Ricard's tank hits the scoreboard first with NSU getting the first goal. A brave throw. You could see that there were players on the near side of the field for Aurora gesturing to have the disc spread wide. But she took the shot and it paid off. Daniel Clanton on the sideline with us as always. What have you seen early, Dan? Good afternoon, Simon. Good afternoon, Leanne. Good afternoon, everyone at home. I'll be bringing some scores from the rest of the quarterfinal matches here in the women's division. On the far field, it is currently Branch. They took their first point against uh, Factory. Uh, on the near field here, we've got Tempest and Underground. So far, that's nil all. They're going to battle. Of course, the, uh, the cutthroat nature of bracket play. It's Got a win to keep on going. Of course, all teams here will play all through to placings. It's not like you lose today and you go home. So every team will play out placings tomorrow, but to still be in contention, you've got to win your third game of the day here. It's uh, can be a marathon sometimes this sport. It's an exciting opportunity for all the teams in the quarterfinals. And guarantees some exciting Frisbee for us viewers. You see NSU, they've uh, mismatched themselves on defence. Left a free attacker there, deep down the field. Potch, sorry, Lamb with the disc. Backwards to Perkins, happy to lose yards. Perkins with no, re no easy reset option, only looking forward. Finally gets some help back from Hernandez. Dua. Potch. Is she trying to push him to that high side? They're happy to take what they're given. Ash. Slings it over the top. Perkins there, easy as you like, straight in her lap. Yeah, very typical of Rosalie Ash's game. Quite calm. Never looks too phased or stressed. A much more efficient offense there from Hills. 
Aurora running to the line. Keen to get get ready for this next point. Yeah, just a great... Uh, very hard, those floaty ones, Leanne, to really land them just in that back sort of five metres of the end zone. It's very easy to overshoot them. Especially with a bit of a breeze. Mm. Daniel. Well, underground, her start their game the way their tournament has gone. They're up 1-0 now against Tempest. Underground out of ACT. Representing the nation's capital. We've got two teams in the quarterfinals from uh, at this event from Canberra. We've got underground and factory representing. Strong ultimate scene in Canberra. Yep. One of the biggest leagues in the country. So you see the Hills, uh, sorry, the Hills defensive line. Ready to go. Good Hernandez pull there by Hernandez. Going to pin them back early. Lane to Lamb. Got a zone look again. Zone ish. I think it's match defense, but Hill's really looking to cover any sort of extra territory they can while still paying attention to their player. Benelli Brondex, Lane. A lot of offense going to be running through Kendall Lane, Gakuten. Yeah, not much movement happening upfield. It's just working around the close to the handlers now. Ong, right on the sideline now. Wants to move it back to the middle. Goes high. Smart play by Lane. Get anybody behind it. Now find space in field. Dana Gatkutin. Short again. Happy just to take these smaller options. Just creep their way up the field. Lane now. Top of the sideline. About 18 from goal. Up the line, too much traffic there. Ash pings it away, but it's landed straight in the hands of Belinda Lamb. Pure reaction catch, that one. Happened to have a hand in the air in the right place. I think the original destination or intended destination for that throw was Buryak. It was a dicey old throw into traffic, as we see. One, we see one, two, three. Hills attackers on that side had the advantage, and then three, two, for fourth receiver coming in. Ash got a good chunk of it, but... Lamb just sticks the juke out and it sticks. This lands right in it, and that's all you need to do is control it, stop the spin. Doesn't matter if you met to or not. <laughs> Aurora looking quite static on offense during that point. I don't know if it was because of the defensive look that Hills was giving. Maybe just not quite knowing where to go when. So you said the Aurora. Squad list on the screen there. Care place to watch for us. We said Kendall Lane, number two, Belinda Lamb, 54 as you bar for a lot of uh, offense will run through them. Charlotte Kong, one of the downfield targets, number 15. So, game still on serve as we call it. It's just been all offensive scoring. So, back and forth scoring, of course, each team switching ends and switching roles, each goal. We Kick over the nine-minute mark. Not, not a frenetic pace this game yet. I think team, they're still sort of filling each other out. A lot of deep cuts going long from Hills there. With Jessica Chow on the end of that one. Right on the doorstep now. Throws into a bit of traffic too. Too much of a tight gap to squeeze that throw too. And I think they're... Decided to play for territory. Get the disc downfield. Play the zone. Try and get an early turn here. So Bath now. Pings it through the middle, finding space there. Looks like a match defense behind the cup. Yeah, so really recognizing that they're going to work it through their handles a lot. Handley Yong now. Another big high floaty one. Bodies go underneath it. And the turnover's gone. So Hill's now about 22 meters from goal. You see there, big shot going off off camera there. I'm not, I think that was uh, Catalina Hernandez just decided to send that one and see what happens. I think Hills are looking quite comfortable setting that zone, maybe trying to get a turn close to their end zone. Yeah, really putting the pressure on NSU to try and work it upfield. Bath. It's a good find. Great find. 
Sandy Chow back to Leong. Looked a little bit more lively. Yeah, on Erica. That. I think very much a territory game. We've got Melo with the disc now. So she, Melo, sorry. Just want to get it long and out of there looking for Geisler who grabs it just in the fingernails. Jarman does enough to get a hand in there. Carries it a bit too much for Parker Camiliax. And they've settled into the zone defense again. Yep, yeah. They've picked their run to contend with it. And it's fine if they get that turn again. It's going to take that one shot at the end every time. So, Chow yeah, just loves those ones over the top, and Bath is just ready for them. This is it's making the Hills defense have to work. Just taking those one, those long shot throws through the gaps. Rich Ricard's tag now. Wide to Bath. No wind to speak of. It makes those over the top throws slightly easier. This one's going to float for Leong, but she's got plenty of time. Has a good long look upfield before taking the close option. So you see, Hills have got the numbers trying to crown this throw. sideline. Another one over the top, too. Thread and needle. Charlotte Kong. Look at hand there. Sneaky one up the line. They're close to the end zone now. Still about 16 from goal. Happy to lose some territory. Big swing pass over the top to Bath. They've got. I wanted to have numbers on that high side, but the floaty throw means that the defenders can get there quicker. Now we've got some space. And there we go. Well worked by Aurora. They Amaz found their mojo during that point. Yeah, amazing point by Sandy Chow. Just those precision throws over the top, those, those bladey forehand flicks, as we call them. They're incredibly difficult to, to angle and uh, send them well. Yeah, and even more difficult to defend when they come off and they're pinpoint. Very difficult to defend against them. Yeah. So that's the first first break of the game. So NSU getting the turn. It's more Hills really gave them the turn, I think. Hills were just going for the territory, just sending it long and then trying yeah. to trying to really get a, trying to get the disc back close to their own end zone for a quick score. Yeah, and Aurora had had a number of turnovers against that zone, so probably happy to let them make the mistake, but they didn't. Yeah. So we see the squad list for Hills, and the players here we've seen to look for. And Catherine Geisler, the captain. Canalia Hernandez, number five. Gabby, Mil Gabby Mello, the big throwers for the team, and, and Sarah Perkins, as we've talked about as well, just one of the Experienced hands on the team has coached Australian age group teams multiple times, so scholar of the game. Knows her way around a frisbee. So you see Hills coming out in a horizontal ish formation. They've got three handlers back, really trying to open up as much space as they can on the near side of the field for their cutter. Sarah Perkins finds a cutter at that top side now. They've now move their formation more centrally, but Ash, no one near her. So I have to move it early, but she's put it too far. Lamb taking a run deep. Wade sends a big forehand up. Probably going to fall short this one, but Lamb's got front position. Ash readjusts, gets the two hands on it to knock it down. So Hill's going back to that horizontal formation where they st typically start the point from with four cutters across the field to really open up space for cuts towards the disc or deep but handles are getting too slow to clear out of that space and it's just not giving them any it's not giving them multiple looks so had to descend into the lap of Jean. it was too hot for a lamb now again pings that long bladey flick up and the throwing from NSU here has Precision. just been on song. Diana Kakutin with the goal that time. Time out for Hills. Yep, and probably a smart call by now, Leanne. You'd be, you'd be calling one by now, do you think? I mean, if I had the presence of mind, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if someone reminded me. 
But, yeah, they'll want to regroup and yeah. start the game over, I'd say. Yeah, I think plan A is sort of not really going to suit them, I think. They're, they're really trying to put all the pressure back on NSU to take the game on with their throws. But NSU are more than happy to do that and really loving putting those shots over the top. And they were ho Hills were hoping it'll play into their hands and have the tall defenders there to pick them off, but just not getting it. Can't get their hands on it. So, yeah. And like you said earlier, the wind is not a factor at the moment. Not a, yep. Maybe yeah. maybe that'll change. Maybe that zone will be more effective later and those over-the-top throws mm. more difficult to execute. But right now, playing into their hands. So we'll head over to Dan for a score update from the other fields. Yeah, it's uh, getting spicy over on the far field uh, factory. They're up 4-2 in their game. And... Uh, between Tempest and Underground, it's even to all there. Thanks, Daniel. Factory up over Branch, another Sydney team. Some strong Eastern Region representation in this, uh, in the top eight here. As we see NSU, and why wouldn't you be up and about? 4-1 up in a quarter final against a... How long do you have to be playing against them for it to be an old rival? <laughs> Is two years enough? I think, I think we can say that. Yeah, NSU Aurora, quite a new team on the scene. Yeah, new club, the northern suburbs of Sydney. I'm not overly familiar with the Sydney geography band, Melbourne native myself, but north, not quite manly north. Yeah, Does northern right? suburbs. Yeah, yep. northern suburbs. So, and of course, hills from the hills district of Sydney, the northwestern suburbs. Yeah. Sound about right? Yeah, there's been yeah. some um, more geographic development with the women's teams in Sydney. Yep. Which is great. Says a lot for the strength of strength of women's ultimate yeah. as it's developing. So Izzy Bath, the cap one of the captains of NSU getting ready to pull, just giving a couple of last minute instructions. We have had one whistle from the observers of uh, sorry the game advisors. Of course teams have from when the last goal is scored they've got uh, 75 seconds for the pool to go up. So 60 seconds for the offense to signal they're ready. Can be a lot to organize in that time. Geisler. Not much coming towards her, but finds Mello, who Mello pumps it long. Who's got, oh, the huge grab for Dua. Realised as, as soon as that throw went up, she's like, oh, God, I've got, to, I've got some work to do here. <laughs> but the choice is, do you want to make that catch or do you want to play defence? Yeah. <laughs> the point could be over now, could be over later. We've got some players very, very close in for NSU. They're going to play, happy to attempt to play a bit of small ball. West. Lots of space in this close side of the field, but no one's running to it. Forced to go up and around to Bath. Not sure, but through the fingers. Bobble and Hernandez makes sure of it. Yeah, seven metres from goal now. She looked at, she looked backwards for the reset, didn't like what she wanted there. So just looked up field and Geisler just ran into the space for the easy goal. And Let's get the job done. He'll steady themselves a bit with their second goal. That still leaves Aurora with a pretty decent advantage at this stage of the game. We're just about to tick over 20 minutes, about a quarter of the way through to time cap. Hill's not afraid to put it up long. Still looking at that attacking style. You see that throw from Gabby Mello. She, something I don't think is talking about. There's a, I don't know if it's coming across on camera, Leanne. There's a fairly significant elevation change from one end of this field to the other. Yeah. If you stand in the bottom left corner, look towards the top right, it's a solid two or three metres uphill. So, Well, if I knew to bring my laser level. <laughs> so what that will mean, obviously, is fantastic facilities here at uh, Port Stephens with Nelson Bay, the Tom Reese Sports Complex. So we're not expecting them to dig it up <laughs> and settle it for us, but... But you play, you, you, play with the, you play the fields you're on, you play the conditions you're in, but what we'll probably see is throws going to the left of screen will probably overshoot, and throws going to the top will fall short. Throws going to the right of screen, sorry, will fall short, just because 
Um, Suddenly there's the ground. Yes, very much so. I'm sure anyone doing VCE or HSE maths methods could probably do <laughs> the math, maths on that one, working out angles and sine and cosine and TAS, but that was uh, too long ago for me to <laughs> realise. Again, <laughs> another over the top throw. We know the Brondex, but... You see Jessica Chow with the run through block and now it looks like Hills have woken up the defense and have wisened to those throws that are going to sit in the air a lot longer than people realize. We've got a diagonal formation here from Hills to try and get off the sideline, but NSU is surrounding it. Lots of cuts go up at once and big swing and a miss by <laughs> Katia Buryak, but it wasn't relevant. It was good. Excellent defensive setup there from NSU to recognize what Hills were doing. It can be confusing in the scramble to pick as players are coming out who you're going to cover as they come, but they did that quite well there. Pinelli Brondex, big loop here over the top throw, but again through the hands of Ricard's Tang and Parker Keneliax was the one that was wise to that one that time, knew that was coming. Another big bladey forehand and Lamb reads that one falling short. The intended target there, Gemma Garland. Sneaks that one through. Go behind her. Chow's got a free look at the end zone, but it's two on one, so she opts to go backwards instead. Bit of a wobbly old one, but Lamb's underneath it. Good shot over the middle. There's plenty of space there. Ricard's tank just got her toes clipped on the way through. She seems okay now, but... The foul creates a stoppage. She restarts play about eight metres from goal. Centre field. She's got to look at both sides. What a throw. Nice you know, floaty throw. Over to the, the top again. <laughs> yeah, to the advantage of Benelli Brundock. She's right on the line now. Heaps of numbers on this side. Out they come. And look at that. So, oh, no. She's overcooked it. <laughs> Just you put an extra finger on it. <laughs> Not the intended destination. Uh, having a chuckle to myself with that one. We've all been there. Sometimes when the receiver's two metres in front of you, it's too good to be true, and you, you overthink and going, what's happened? Why are they free? Speaking of free cutters, we've got another one out in front. A fantastic leading pass there to Garland. But no numbers ahead of her, so she's going to have to look backwards. Man, she's going to have to get rid of it soon. Finds Poon. Poon to Perkins. Perkins just looking to that high side, wants to move it up there to give themselves more space where they've got numbers, but a pick is called in the stack. So play will stop. It'll be still count of about three or four. So Perkins will have about a, probably a five or six second look at the end zone. With all of her players ahead of her at the moment, so she's going to have to throw forward. It takes a challenge on anyway. And Poon having to turn around, look over her opposite shoulder for that one. They're tricky to reel in the end. Another angled type throw that can be hard to read. And there we go. Two hand to block on that one. Who knew that one was coming? And so Hills get a second look at the end zone, about 15 from goal. Content taking their time to get to it. They're not going to rush themselves. Emily Graham to pick up Perkins. Busting up the line. Fantastic around backhand throw. First grab doesn't do it, but slows enough for down. Bit of a set play, that one in the end. Just looking for that break side throw up the line to Perkins. So 4-3 now to Hills. When you have a dominant player cutting up line like that, it's very difficult to not throw that throw. Yeah, and she went about a second before the disc was even picked up, so the defender was just caught completely unaware. That's, that's an experienced thing, and players should learn from that. So we see some highlights from that point. Let's cross to Daniel for an update from the other quarterfinals. Well, actually, Simon, I was going to tell you that over 100 metres, a fall of 2 uh, metres is about 0.3 of a degree. Oh, thank you. Important information. <laughs> On the far field, uh, it's, uh, it's about to be half-time. Factory uh, up 7-2 at the moment Ooh. against uh, Branch. Wow, we. Branch, of course, finishing second in their pool. Factory third, so... Yeah, Branch coming off a... Of a good win earlier today as well. They upset NSU in pool play, I think. They got a close win over them. And then they had to back it up with a win against Valkyrie. So they've had a 
tough all day. Obviously, the third game might be a bit of an ask for them. Uh, not to take anything away from Factory, of course. They're a very talented team. And the game's not over yet. Yep. Still a long way to go. Lane. Hill's persistent with the zone. Leon. There's a couple look upfield. It looks like sometimes you get less experienced players come up against the zone. will only look backwards and sideways. But NSU, they're all of them are confident to have a look upfield and take their shots over the top. It's fantastic to see. Very skillful team. Bath. Running out to that high side lane. Oh, and Leong baits that one as Hernandez half a step off. Without missing a beat. Leong, she's having a look at the end zone. It's probably not the shot yet. Lane has to go full stretch for it. Probably set herself up too close there. Made that over the shot top quite difficult. So, looks like Perkins is going to... Jog to the disc, pick it up. They're going this horizontal formation. Expect a long shot to come off here. She sends the big whoopy backhand out. Lane's all over that one, but it strikes over. It bounces off one chest and... <laughs> Almost lands on the next. <laughs> oh, listen to it. it. was Everyone knew it was coming, but... No one could make a clean play at it. Ah, oh, having to scoop that one up from off her toes. <laughs> make a couple extra yards. So because Hills are forcing, trying to pin the throw on one sideline, Leong's really helping them out by getting it over the zone off that sideline. They get it across to Bath. Bath will, she'll have one look at field, she'll hold it up. Oh, she won't, she'll keep going forward. <laughs> get it done, she yeah. wanted to score the point. Yeah, I think the, the zone defense has just run out of legs. What I was going to say is they'll try and work it to that high side and then as they swing back across, come back on across on an angle to gain an extra 10 or 15 metres as they come back across, taking the easy ones. Yeah. It puts a lot of pressure on uh, this near side handle, Leong, to get it off, like back or around that zone to get it up there. But Leong's just taking the nose. We see that grab from Bath there. Simon, it looks to me like it's almost like she's playing as if there's no defender in front of, in front of her at all. She's yep. ignoring them, throwing it over the top. Very confident. And a nice little one-two move there. Danica Kutten and Izzy Bath. Daniel, what have you seen? Uh, some score updates. Factory did take half, 8-2 over there. Uh, between Underground and Tempest near side, it's uh, much closer, 5-4. Underground just scored. Very close there, and we've just got an update for the other quarter final. Zig Theory have taken half over Valkyrie, 8 1. <laughs> so, the Adelaide Derby. Wonder how many times they've played each other this yeah, season. Exactly. It's not, uh, not quite equating to the AFL showdown, how close that usually gets, but another great big shot from Hills right on the doorstep. The one and done play, Trisha Lim. Got plenty of options behind her. Puts it in the hands of Mello. She's got both sides to look at. Nice curvy throw back into the hands of Trisha Lim. Two critical catches that point. And I think that's what Hills need to do. When they're receiving the disc, I think they just need to score as quickly as they can and put some pressure back on NSU to keep the scoreboard ticking over. So it's a one goal margin at the moment to NSU. But they still had the advantage, obviously, starting this point on offense. So Hills really need to, it's probably not critical just yet, but a defensive conversion will be pretty handy for them in the next couple of points. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see whether or not they play that same zone, which we saw Aurora play against quite effectively last point. They scored. Yeah, they've started to get a couple of blocks off it, so I think they might persist. I think they might still give it a go. I think they're getting be I think they're getting better at reading those throws out of the hand of NSU. Their their back three of that zone would probably want to play closer to the disc, but of course that would open up the even longer shot. So sometimes you want to it's risk versus reward. You want to force try and force the the offense to take those bigger longer shots because they're more likely to result in a turnover because they're high percentage. But of course you run the risk of them coming off as well yeah. and being exposed. They lie with the roller pull. This will get some territory. Especially rolling in that downhill direction. 
would have kept going to the car park if not stopped there. <laughs> Bath now playing on its near side. Wants to have a go at the top throws, but goes to the car's tank. Two options there. They set themselves up well. We'll talk about that in a moment. Bath. Sano. Sorry, low. Yeah, just... Everything too crowded in Twer and Rachel Poo knocks that one out of the air. She she expected that high one. And she got her hands up and... Then brought him down, yeah. right on the frisbee. This is their diagonal stack again, and again, NSU has set both sides of it today. Get the break throw out now to Geyser. Poon. Bello, unguarded at the moment. Not a smart op not a smart idea. I see where they got. They got Kendall Lane sitting out the back of the end zone there, just to the left of camera there in the visor. So blocking those long shots, but Hills are just going to use that free handler. And Geisler just overcooks that one, I think. Oh no, we're called a foul. That's that makes sense. I was gonna say a throw like that from Geisler is rare. Especially to an open target. Yeah. And I mean it's not the Oh yeah, we've got a nice little clip on the wrist there. So that'll be an uncontested foul. So Geisler with is gonna start with the disc from the full stall count ahead of her. Right on the doorstep. Lane then goes to Melo now. And there's the break back we were talking about, Leanne. To bring it back Chow. to five all. It's out the front of the end zone. Yeah. So what the what Ennis talking more about defense. Um, so what NSU were doing on the setup with that zone is when you as you see here, we're gonna see. I think it was, oh no, it wasn't. <laughs> she went for the jump team, shot on that one. Team defense there. That one, I think Garland got her hands on that one. I think that kind of throw is really the result of feeling the pressure. Yeah, of course, And not, not feeling confident that you're going to be able to offload to someone, Yeah. someone else on your team. So what NSU were doing, though, it set up, and it looked very deliberate. They set up two reset options very close to the cup. So one sort of just ahead, one to the side because the cup can't cover both of them. Mm -hmm. And it means you're sort of you're taking out one of your wings to do that. You're overloading players behind the disc. But it just makes those resets a lot easier for players who might not be as confident with those over-the-top throws. But what the, what happened there is that um, I think it was Erica Lowe was left with only one option. Uh, went too close to the sideline to let that play happen. Yeah. That's why that block happened. And then defensively what they did is they had Kendall Lane to sit out the back mm -hmm. um, to really just... Discourage those long shots. Yeah, and she's a good, she's a good deep defender. She's Great able deep to get defender, but obviously it means you leave one player open, and you don't want to leave Gabby Mello. Probably <laughs> not. <laughs> she'll she'll know exactly what she's she doing. Knows, and you up. She knows her way around that situation. So teams called a, having a timeout there. We're not sure who that was called by, but we'll go to Daniel Clayton, who was there eavesdropping. Well, it was called by Nathan Chan, coach of NSU Aurora. Just asking his team to calm a little bit, take a bit of a breath. This is the game that they wanted. It's the game that's going to happen. Um, you know, just don't push it too much. I was actually standing next to Simon Wood on the sideline, on the near side here, and uh, he was in fully encouraging and uh, Giesler to throw a hammer on that last point. Yep. Simon Wood, the coach of Hills. So different approaches by the coaches there. And I think... Simon, it's easy when you're playing against a team that is taking a lot of long, maybe a little bit higher risk options like Hills are, um, it is easy to fall into that trap yourself and feel like this is how we need to play. This is how the game's going, yeah. But it hasn't, yeah, Aurora don't need to take that strategy, not unless, you know, it's within their game plan. Of course. Of course, what you don't want to do as a coach is if your team's playing like that and there's good energy, you don't want to tell them to dial back and take it easy because that can take their energy out of the game. The land, there we go, big crossfield shot. Right over the top of that defense again. Yeah, Brionis was with the catch there. Leong right in the corner now. Hill's overloading the corner here, so they're wisely going to try and move to that top side where they've got lots of numbers. Lamb. Uh, almost could have snuck that one in. She's uh, second. <laughs> she's thinking twice about her throws now after that one before. That's it's a well, well worked offensive point by Aurora. They yeah. started with their now signature throw over the top of the defense, yeah. and then they were in a, a ton of space. Yeah, and again, it's 
It's uh, who's going to give up the strategy first? A hill's going to abandon the zone first. Or is it going to work? We see a lamb. She, she look, she's a bit one, once bitten, twice shy about that one before. She thought, no, no, I'm going to be absolutely certain of this. But Lane says, look, if you won't, I will. And she does. <laughs> yeah, I think that hills have definitely been able to capitalise on some blocks in the zone. So it's not a 100% to, to either side. Cool. We've got a score update from any other quarterfinals, Daniel. Yeah, Factory are well and truly in control in their match against Branch. 9-2 the score there. Underground starting to put together a bit of a run after being uh, tied at four. It's now 7-4 to Underground. They're really putting the pressure on against un Inner West. Tempest based in Tempe in the Inner West of Sydney. And it looks like, so the winner of this game would go into a semi-final versus the winner of Underground and Tempest. So. Okay, that should be a... Good matchup, regardless yeah. of which team goes Terrific through. Terrific matchup, yeah. Very even competition this year. It's great to see. Gaisla. Had to work hard for that first connection, that first pass. Lots of space on this near side of the field, but no one coming towards it. I think they prioritise getting to the high side, but the risk of that. Charlotte Kong got the run through D, but Emily Graham calling the foul. I think there was a little bit of arm clip on the way through. Let's go a quick chat, like, as we see the replay there. Look at the form of that forehand. <laughs> Fantastic. So, yeah, the run through. Ooh, okay, yeah. So, yeah, contested foul. Looks like the right outcome there, Leanne. I don't think it's sort of clear. Yeah. Like, they both had a good chat. Here's, sometimes you can't quite sort of unite on exactly what happened. So it's going to reset to the last play and go from there. Send it back for the karma call. Pass the throw to this near side now. Hernandez. Has given the inside side. So she took it to Lim. Graham. It's the one up for that backhand. They're giving Hills the backhand throws. And it's gone up and over the top. And Izzy Bath. Read that out of the hand and got in the right position for that one, but chaotic offense now. They're going to be in trouble here. Someone needs to go to the disc. Yeah, rush throw. That was a sudden turn. You not, can be not quite ready for it. So Hernandez now gets the second shot. The four, and it's all set for the forehand. Look, Graham. We give him the backhand and... Makes the completion this time. Into the lap of Flora Lamb for her first goal. So, defenders will typically stick on one side of the thrower to really try and cut off half the field. And you would typically unite as a team, you know, which one we're going to do. But it looked like, I don't know if it was a deliberate, it could have been forcing a throw to the middle, but we saw, yeah, Hernandez was given the backhands there. Yeah, a lot of times teams will default to yeah. forcing forehand, which is forcing the throwers to go in that direction towards the far side of the field. Sometimes if you're changing it up, you can get in a situation like there where the downfield defender's caught on the wrong side or gets wrong footed too easily. And it's a nice easy throw to an open receiver. So, a lot six of, all. A lot of communication required. Yep. <laughs> you usually need the sideline to get involved with their back view voice. Neither team's sideline is really up and about at the moment. I think there's conserving energy. See Nathan Chan, the coach. Long time player himself. Former Australian Masters representative. Hills sticking with the zone. Lane to Briones, back to Lane. They're rotating players through the handle position here. NSU, they're Get the disc in everyone's hands. So, yeah. It's a little give go movements while they've got the advantage. Rush that throw. Lane was charging in, but just as well had float on it. Floaty enough. Gave her time to double back. Bang it straight through the middle to Gargut and Brionis. Bit of pressure on her now. 
Oh, great find. Yeah, great find. Fantastic play there. And nice, easy to like, marching virtually straight down the middle of the field those couple of throws. And this, the zone just not effective here, Leanne. Yeah, once um, they did, Hills had them in a bit of a predicament on the far sideline, but once the defender came around behind, open up that gap straight through, and then Hills had a lot of, lot of trouble trying to find the, find the people to defend from there. Dana Gakutin now. Second goal, I think, for her. She's definitely been heavily involved in the play around the end zone. So. Absolutely, yeah. There's a few, and uh, like you said earlier, Simon, they do rotate the handlers through. It shows that as a team they have a lot of trust for each other and they have a lot of versatility as well. It's evident that their training is skills heavy. I think that's, you tend to, at the higher levels of the game, it tends to be about fitness, speed, stamina, endurance. Yeah. But at the Division Two level, uh, yeah, it's great to see. The yeah, Aurora team are known for having quite sound fundamentals, which for a Division Two team, yeah. I play on a Division One team, and I would love to have fundamentals that sound <laughs> across the team. So, uh, so I say strategy is just something to talk about at training. Really, all you need to do is just be throw and catch well. <laughs> Fifteen good throws and catches will win a game of ultimate. Ash. Sean. If only it was that easy. <laughs> <Do it. laughs> That's just finding space wherever she can. They've really, the Hills have just kept four back. Behind the dish, Sean. Plenty of it now, and Perkins wobbly old forehand, but it's going to be enough. Not, not exactly the fundamental skill that Sarah Perkins is well known for, but you know what? It works, and if you're good enough, sometimes like if you have those skills yep. under yep. control, even when you throw a bad throw, it can work. <laughs> we, didn't, we didn't quite catch that wide angle there, but it was uh, well the old throw, and Shirley Clotch is not too pleased about being put in it like that, but <laughs> she'll, t she'll take the goal. Here we go, yep, just, oh. That's um, a grip issue there, I think, that one. Just yeah. didn't quite... A uh, little bit of balance, I'd say, enthusiasm, <laughs> stepping forward. Stepping forward too far can sometimes turn the disc like that yeah. as you're letting go of it. I think she wanted to be in the end zone herself. Yeah, absolutely. It's very easy to take shots like this from, you know, a nice comfy <laughs> chair under the shade here, you know, but we've... I'm very we're familiar <laughs> with that throw. <laughs> so we have both made those, we've, in our careers, we've both done that same thing a hundred times, so... Only a hundred, Simon. Well done. <laughs> yeah, I didn't handle much. <laughs> I think that was my first five years of Ultimate. <laughs> Vanelli Brondex, so yeah, all, all this talk is coming from familiarity also, but criticism for Great cut through the middle there by Jarman. Takes her time. I like the patience of Jarman. A couple of times she's got it, she'll take a good look up field. But again, I think Lane set herself in too close to players sometimes and those over the throws just get beyond her reach. I think she can afford to be about another three or four metres off. A big long shot there looking for the receiver there, Alyssa Dua. Now that's the kind of forehand that I wish I could throw consistently, Simon. And this game has just about turned on its head in the last few minutes. We were talking about going along at a nice steady pace, but Hills have picked up the pace and all of a sudden it's half, 8-7. They've hit the lead for the first time. As you said, the look there from Lane, it was, they knew exactly that's what was going to happen, but just put too much in it. I think just Lane set herself up uh, too close to them. As you see, another great grab by the Hills team. We're going to head down to Daniel, chatting with one of the Northern Suburbs players. Yes, I'm here with May Lee regards Tang. May Lee, you're a very handy player. Is, is that kind of a role that Nathan Chan has given to you to chip in when the offence needs it? 
Yep, um, I originally started as a cutter. Um, I'm working towards more utility at the moment, so yeah, working on that at the moment. Well, it's showing out there. How many times have you played at Nationals? Um, this is my second time. I played last year with NSU as well. Well, you're doing very well out there. Are you enjoying the game so far? Yes, it's really fun. It's definitely one of the tightest games we've played at the moment, so yeah. All right, thank you very much for your time, Maylee. I'll let you get back to the team. Thank you so much. Uh, we'll go back to you, Simon Talbot. Thank you. We've just had an update from the other quarterfinal, Zig Theory, up on Valkyrie 12-2. So we're nearly close to call on that one, I think, Leanne. It's uh, still a bit of time to go, but we're going to throw it back to Daniel, who's going to tell us what's happening in the other two quarterfinals. Well, at the moment on the far field, 10-2, uh, the score over there. It is factory all the way. Uh, the battle between uh, Inner West and, and Underground in the near field is a little bit closer, 7-5 still over there. Thanks, Daniel. And so we uh, teams gather for the halftime break. We're going to take a short break ourselves. We'll be back with the second half soon. Second half action underway. As we see some highlights from the first half there, Leanne, what do you think is going to be the key to these first couple of points of the second half? Well, I think it'll be interesting to see whether both teams come out with more of the same or whether they vary their tactics. Yep. Hills have been playing a lot of that zone, which has had mixed results. Um, Aurora feeling comfortable throwing over the top. Daniel, your thoughts on the second half? Well, just to feed into what you're questioning about tactics, uh, talking to Simon Wood, coach of the Hills team, he said uh, the wind is, or the lack thereof, is not great. They prefer windier conditions. But uh, in terms of defence, they need to be tighter. If they get closer, they're going to have more success. So that was what he emphasised during his halftime talk. So do you think he's requested more wind? <laughs> he's a man that can make things happen, Simon Wood, but I don't know how far his influence ranges when it comes to the weather conditions but so we hear the Australian Ultimate Championships Division 2 action coming to you through KO Freebies in Australia and Ulti.tv for international viewers thank you for joining us on this Sunday afternoon Australian time this is just day two we've got more action tomorrow starting from about 8 30 Australian Standard Time tomorrow morning it's about 15 hours from now sorry 16 hours from now with the semi-finals and finals games tomorrow. Should be a cracker. So we hope you can join us for that, whether you're watching live or on demand. Yeah, we're getting to the pointy end of this tournament. Teams vying to stay in contention to win. And of course, if you're enjoying this tournament, mark April 21st, April 24th on your calendar for the Australian Ultimate Championships, the big one, Division 1. One, one whole day extra of 
Frisbee yep. play. The top 12 teams in each division in Australia will be battling it out here in Nelson Bay. And thanks to the wonderful people at Port Stephens oh, Council yeah. for helping us make this event happen here. As you see, the pool got for the second half. We've ticked over 50 minutes in. We've got at least half an hour of gameplay to go. As uh, NSU have got a zone look of their own. I Wilson think Hills to throw a lot of goes zigzag across the field, but they are very, very comfortable with this. Throwing over the top one themselves. Poon to Ash. Bit of a fumble. Mello. Giesler. Mello. Happy just to take these short ones up the sideline and then bounce it back towards the middle. She's overcooked that backhand. It's difficult to get those low around backhands out through, under a defender's arm. Lane pumps it long. It's just going to fall short, but it's well read by... Well read by Bionis to come in short, but Camilla hot no heels. Certainly no call, so they've got this zone on. They're going to try and pin them to this side like Mello. Poon just... Not much spin on that disc. I think just sort of tried to flip it overhand. Lane's probably going to look to get it moving soon, but Hills have set this zone. Really pin them on this sideline. Lane just goes to sling it over the top of Emily Graham, which he did, but not quite far enough to get into the hands of Buryak. Hills are excited to play against the zone. <laughs> So bit, is, bit too excited. This is their bread and butter. This is their happy place. Hello, big loopy one over the top. And huge run through effort there by Jarman. Doesn't quite get to it. So Hills have numbers here running through. And as you finally catch up with their zone. Hills happy, content not to rush it. They know there's still plenty of time in this game. They're not against the clock. Lane puts a big loopy throw out. Lane, wow. sorry, Graham put the throw over the top of Lane. Lane, Lane couldn't have done much more yep. to interrupt that throw. You can do everything right but still get torched. It'll be interesting to see whether NSU, that was their, sort of their first zone look. It's very common for teams to come out of the second half with a different defensive setup just to try and upset offences. But the Hills offence, opposite of upset, they're absolutely stoked. <laughs> <laughs> like, hell yeah. <laughs> They might, they may have paid them off at half time. Can you please play a zone on us? <laughs> if you're, yeah, if you're well practiced at zone offense, you tend to be able to throw and catch the frisbee a lot and not necessarily have to run that much, which is, it can be very enjoyable. Exactly. Daniel, what have you seen? Score update from the far field, 11-3, currently the score factory in front. Underground have managed to take half finally against uh, Inner West, 8-6 uh, the score here. 8-6, so Underground over Tempest and factory out of ACT over Branch from Sydney. And news from the other fields is that the other quarterfinals wrapped up Zig Theory through to the semi-final over Valkyrie 15-2. Hills persisting with their zone defence. Great fingertips grabbed there by the win. Their first touch of the game. Finelli Brondex. We're going to win again. Has to go horizontal for it, but got to control it all the way through as you hit the ground, and it's a bit difficult to do that with one hand sometimes. Great big shot over the top and straight into the waiting lap of Lamb. She's been the target of a couple of those tall ones with her foot right on the goal line. Heads back to Ash. Nice little one-two. That's she, the exact combination we saw earlier in the game. Yep, she's a danger player for them. Lim, fantastic field awareness too. It's uh, She's not worried at all. Sometimes you see players try and like, milk it that extra meter or two to go, right, let's see if I can catch it in the end zone. Not worried about it at all. She's catch first, everything else later. That's a, that's a sign of a player who enjoys playing Frisbee. They don't mind if there's a couple extra throws or catches. Yeah, doesn't want the point to be over. Wants to keep having been out there and having fun. But it's advice I find myself giving you players a lot, Leanne, is don't worry about where your feet are. Just get the disc in your hands and then everything else is details. Hopefully they land on the ground somewhere. <laughs> I see Simon Wood out there. He's... His energy is going to be up, imploring the team to get their energy up there. And a bit of a run now. I think that's the last four goals in a row they've got now. NSU 
really need to just stick with what they're doing, but probably tighten up the throwing a little more, tighten up the positioning a little more, get this one in. Yep. And just steady the ship a little bit. Yeah, keep working at those gaps that they've been finding through the zone, which I'd say Hills are likely to put on again. Yep. It's Hernandez working. Hernandez with a big long pull, pinning them about 55 from goal. It's a match defense. Yep, they've changed it up now. This is, and yeah, NSU were not really ready for that one. They're settling in now. Find some space. Very active lane. Plenty of space on the side side. Rickens Tang. Happy to contend working with short throws, Jarman. Is that inside? They switch the force up, going to back end now. Are they? They might. Maybe force middle. Yeah. Okay. So force. Yeah. Trying to keep the play from the sideline, trying to clog up the middle of the field. But Lane's going to go right. If you're going to give me a back end, <laughs> I really like it. And she's landed it in the back corner. That could not have been better positioned. And that's Erica Lowe. Sorry, that's uh, Michi Sano grabbing her. I think second goal. Both offensive teams getting an opportunity to play their their strengths. Their favourite offence. Lane with the backhand <laughs> huck there. This throw could not have been better. Look at that. High floaty, but then just enough. Back corner of the end zone. Fade at the last minute just for it catching in bounds. You'd, you'd be, you know, you look at that and see that there are defenders in the area. Perhaps they can have a... A swat at that, yeah. maybe get in the way, but the throw was to the perfect space. You see, Flora Lamb was a player trying to come through, but Sano just really positioned herself well where Lamb could not make a play on that without failing her. And, you know, credit to Lamb for just accept, almost accepting that she'd be in that position. She still went and had a go at it, got her hand in just to say, look, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make... It's worth a try. It's always gonna, worth yeah, the I'm effort. Gonna, you know, I might swing it. I might affect the atmospheric pressure around the disc. And, you know, <laughs> something may happen. I can't not try. Maybe she'll feel like she has to climb uphill too far. <laughs> or maybe that's, I think that's what... I think that's what it was. I think she was on the downhill side. <laughs> maybe, yeah. Lamb couldn't get up the hill quick enough. So I was like, it's over. I have the higher ground. Fantastic pull there from Bath, Perkins, Mello. So an offense now, Perkins and Mello are just gonna... They're gonna take on this zone. It's gonna be a training run for them. There we go, nice little one-two up the line. Very comfortable in close quarters. And Mello's fakes, everyone is biting on them. There we go, space through the middle there. Chow for Mello. Mello's put the big bloody forehand out, that's gonna fall short, but... Mello trying to give yep. Aurora some of their own treatment, Garland throwing had, it over the cup. Yep, Garland had players coming from two sides there. Big loopy throw out. The deep defenders for Hills there need to be more aware of those shots are going to come up. They do have time to get to them. Gargutin, Gargutin, sorry. Throw to the middle and absolutely not the intended receiver, <laughs> Sandy Shout, but she will take it. Works well. Bath. Plenty of time, not a soul count. I know Sands it pings it down the line. To Kong. Three on one there in the end zone. Yeah. Kong just had plenty of chances there. And didn't find herself rushed. It's very, very easy to get excited to be one metre from goal and go, right, this this cannot go wrong. I don't have to try. <laughs> but she still made, gave herself two feet on the ground, nice and balanced. This is a great Bath penetrating been, pass from Bath here. Yeah, Bath's been fantastic at just on those swings, just... Creeping forward, taking every, just two, three metres. Just every little, every little advancement counts. Bit of the sneak. She had an, a layout earlier. She yeah. gained four or five metres. And a few on that, yeah. And yeah, pinpoint backhand. It was just too far for Perkins. Perkins having to make a decision defensively there. Yeah, and taking Parker Kineliax. Had to do something. She's, <laughs> I've got to pick one and got to go for it. I think Hills called that time out there. That's uh, two goals back now for Aurora to bring it back to 10-9. But Hills with the offensive advantage. As you see, Daniel creeping into frame there. What have you, what have you got for us? 
Well, I was just uh, very sneaky joining the Hills huddle there. <laughs> um, Simon Wood, uh, the closest I think we'll ever see to a spray from Simon Wood, asking his girls to get tighter. There was no D. They yep. need to do better. I thought he was going to put you in there for a moment, Daniel. <laughs> I, d I don't think so. <laughs> you look ready to play a game of Frisbee. That's yeah, but we, we did notice that, Leanne, like the, the back three of that zone, just, I think they were a bit too complacent then. I think they they should be ready for those over the tops. It's It's been plan A, B and C. Like, why would you not just be ready for that? Play closer to those wings. They're the target. Yeah. Easier said than done sometimes, yeah. though, Simon, with Aurora doing a really good job of spreading the disc around the field, yeah, spreading it wide, throwing it through. Now they're throwing it through, over and behind. There's the no, defense there. There's no particular target. Yeah, you know, sometimes you get teams who play like yeah. that. They're doing it to one specific, one or two specific players in the middle who they want. But they're, unless you're doing it, to everyone was they're spreading, mm -hmm. spreading the love around. Everyone gets to have a go. No, no discrimination on Aurora. They want everyone yeah. involved, and it's really paying off for them. It's very much a cliche, but it's great team ultimate they play. Ash, Quatch. Hernandez gets up the line. Fantastic throw. And pegs that one down the line. There's bodies underneath it, but oh, oh, Bart had the good one. I think Sabrina Jean had the best read of that with her this coming, you know, as she's facing this, this coming towards her. But Bath had to just stick the arm up and see what happens. And Eyes in the back of her head. I saw that yep. a few times this morning when she was, well, yesterday afternoon when she was playing. She seems to have a sixth sense for where the frisbee is at any given time. I think you sort of you read the eyes of the catcher to go when they start to go up. You're like, oh, must be close. Yeah, when you can see the whites of the eyes. You know something has to happen soon. <laughs> so you can see yeah, how spread out the offense is, and they're really making the defense have to work. But Perkins that time read yeah. the disc right out of the hand. I think she saw the option. She might have even baited the option. I think she played more on the high side to tempt them to take that cross field because. Buryak was standing ready for a while. Yeah, as soon as the th as soon as the wind up started, Perkins is on the move. As we see, Hills rush themselves too much and unforced error. We see MSU get another look. Lamb settles the disc central to the field. Yeah, just knew Bath wanted to get those meters, but put too much on it. Just giving Hills another chance. Really crowded in that top corner. They want to work it to this side, but they're going to do it in one throw. That's gone. That's... Oh! <laughs> that was a contest. I thought it was going well out of the field. As soon as I said gone, I held my breath because the distance dropped. And I'm like, oh, I've got that wrong. But, <laughs> it was um, hard-fought defense there. I think the defense could have made the same assumption yeah. that you did and thought, oh, this one's going outfield. I can stop and relax. Yeah. Actually, but... Perkins had a great look at that. Actually, no, I've got this right, Leanne. That's the downhill corner. That's why the throw <laughs> went long. Flat field, that's Perkins. It's hard when you're you're <laughs> tracking the disc and it keeps getting higher for some reason when it should be landing in your hands. Big bladey flick. There we go, the hills. That's quite serious on the wing. I think it was Hernandez. They really played a bit more aggressive there. And that is down that disc. Fantastic effort by Nancy Nguyen to get her hands underneath that, but not enough elevation on it, even though it is a very flat piece of plastic. <laughs> Lamb. Dua. Great grab. Media looks infield. Doesn't want to move, doesn't want to try and move upfield. Good discipline shown. Not many options though. No one's moving for her. This is going to be a high count. She's got to get rid of it. It founds Hernandez who throws a terrific fake, sends her defender upfield, and Rosalie Ash with the goal. And there seems to be. Seemed to be a little bit of a stoppage there, but I think the I think the defense had done all that it thought it could do. And yeah, I think everyone momentarily forgot what happened when you catch it in the end zone. <laughs> so that's the goal. That's a goal, girls. Yeah, the Aurora defense there really had Hills stuck in a corner on the sideline there. Not mm. many options. Yeah. And Hills were able to find something at the last minute. I think they stunned Aurora a little bit. Yeah. And 
And this year really needs to tighten up on that defence on the on that high side particularly. If they're trying to force a throw to throw there, you've got to be responsible for taking the cutters. I think they're too worried about the throws coming out to this side. And yeah, getting faked up the line like that just makes it too easy for Hills. Daniel. Yeah, what happened there was Izzy Barf actually got punched in the face with the disc. Oh. And <laughs> that was the conversation that kind of went on. Uh, Bath happy to play on and just a bit of confusion. Yeah. Uh, on this field here though, Inner West currently fighting back into this game, 9-7 the score. 9-7 underground up there. So we know that one quarter final has been decided, that's Zig Theory from Adelaide over Valkyrie also from Adelaide and the other quarter final going on, Factory out of ACT up over Branch from Sydney. Get our attention's back to this one. And that was a high stall count throw, trying to find space through the middle. Hernandez read that out of the hand, and they're sending. Keep your eye on Trisha Lamb, red hat there, center screen. Drew the defense in, but. Jarman with the block. Yeah. Aurora looked well organized on that yeah. defense. There we go. Lamb's now, now, Lamb's now getting involved on defense. Not as well organised on offence. Graham right on the sideline now, looking to get it to centre field, but clip of the toes there. Ash has gone to ground. Kakutan. Kakutan there. This is a clip. We'll see a foul call on that one yet. Yeah. Oh, is that a slip or a trip? It was definitely a tumble. Yeah, she's called the injury sub, so she's going to... Smile on the face. Yeah. So, yeah, she is called the foul. Um, ultimate, of course, man. Non-contact sport. You know, whether it's intentional or not. This is odd. I don't think there was any contact there, Leanne. But Might have been enough to bump the foot. Yeah, definitely not a clip of the feet at any point. Might have been just a bump of the hip on the way through. Certainly from our angle, there's no contact around the feet. But, look, the players will sort this out. As injury, is their purview. Yeah, injury sub's been taken. Yeah, and the disc has just gone back to the thrower. And perfectly weighted throw from Emily Graham there into... Needed to be an accurate throw with the defender in the back and coming Graham in And Graham would help. have been aware of that. She would have seen, right, I've just got to put this between the two of them. And the onus would have been on the defender at the back there to not make the, the bid on it. You know, if you've got two players coming towards you up the line, it's your responsibility to not charge in and, you know, with the elbows and knees up. So... It was just far enough to get it in goals, but just short enough that the defender had to back out of that contest. So you see that long throw and Jarman yeah. getting the solid mid on it. Yeah, and Lane, yep. Realised she didn't have a play at it. Luna West. Made the right decision yep. to pull out, although I'm sure with regret oh, that she yeah. wasn't positioned <laughs> a little bit differently. Yeah, had I been in closer, she wouldn't have thrown that. That's a kind of things you'll say to yourself afterwards but she's taking that team defense approach which is keeping an eye on her player but trying to help when her player is not as active despite what's at stake here it's very high spirited play out there no very little contact to speak of other than a couple of accidents accidental collisions our game advisors know immediately in Ruben Burke having very little to do <laughs> other than keep the score Fortunately, it's an entertaining game that they can enjoy as they're spectators. not doing much else. <laughs> you see Hill's still with the zone. Scuba looking early on. Puts it out of Lamb. Lamb's going to have to go. Outside in, probably not the preferable option there. Probably should have just kept that one flat. With Graham. It's been a extremely consistent handler today for Hills, as has... Giesler with the disc. Again, just... No reset players come towards Giesler. I wonder if that's intended or whether they just don't like her. <laughs> Lane. Pumps one way, sends the other, and... Foul's being called. Yep. I think that's... Uh, oh, no. Erica Lowe got clipped there with Alyssa Dua. Certainly not intentional, so we see... So as Lana picked up the disc, you watch her fake the forehand, get the defender out of the way, and then just send the big backhand up. But as we say, yeah, definitely 
solid old bump there. So, so see if we can tune in and hear what's going on. Sure. She wants to just check. And then she, and then she basically me, took her out. And then I screamed and fell to the freaking hurt. Uh, you have to ask over there. Yeah, you're going for it and you're in the way, but then there was that step, but I think you have position on it from my, from my perspective. Mm -hmm. That's just a second. Okay. Contest. Just back to the throw, everyone back to where you were when the disc was thrown. So the outcome there, the foul was called. So Lowe took the injury sub there, um, and Bath's cut off for the sub, but she's still allowed to obviously be involved in the foul discussion. So she's called the foul, um, saying that, yeah, Dua's contact caused the drop. Uh, so it's gone, but the Dua was convinced she had a clean going at first. So they could, can't agree, so it's just going to back to the thrower. Have a do-over. Yep, so. Hard, hard to situation to be in when you've just been injured as well. Yeah, of course, yeah. The red mist can sort of descend a bit when you've been hurt. And <laughs> yeah. Land plenty of time to have a look at it. Graham, Emily Graham thought about coming into boot, but thought, no, nope, let's contain rather than attack. Bath, who's just come on as a sub, playing upfield for now. Oh, she doesn't just handle. Yep, there we go. She's just finding space in the middle. It's a good little... Good little throwing pair, the two of them we've got, Lane and Bath. And she's gone over the top. This is a risky shot. There's numbers underneath. And one, two. Holds on to it. Took a couple of goes at it. I think it was Dewar's making another go at it, but it was a, definitely a speculative throw. Ricard's tang. <laughs> but it was to, <laughs> plenty of numbers underneath it. But Good job by all the players there to avoid actually any contact. Everyone like found their line, found their position, just went just went to go at it. It did stay in the air perhaps longer yep. than intended, which yeah. made for a contest but not as safe. Yeah, Tegan Parker Kniak uh, Kniak Kilniak. Apologies there. Having to go at it, but yeah, it was. Lane just saw two of her teammates and thought, "Look, you two sort it out." <laughs> They've put, done the, just, put the ball in your court, so to speak. They've done just that. We're going to shoot over to Daniel Clinton for another update from Yonder. So over Yonder, Factory 14-5 now against Branch. Yep. That game, Branch doing everything they can, but I think that one's over. I think Factory are going to join uh, Zig Theory in the semis. Meanwhile, in the closer field, in the west and underground are tied at nines. It's not going the way that underground wanted. Wow. Uh, in the west, Tempest doing a really good job fighting back into that game. Fantastic game, that one. Of course, the winner of that game plays the winner of this game. So, looks like they'll be just as worn out as each other. Because this game's going to go the distance to time cap. Perkins and Hernandez gain some easy yards on the offense before the zone sets up. Not many options forthcoming ahead of the disc, so they're going to have to go backwards and sideways. Chow with the lateral to Hernandez. Hernandez pops it over the top. Jarman's come in and goes at it cleanly for a land. Not a lot you can do about that. Just set up too long. Bath on guard at the moment. Everything is downfield at the moment. Nothing towards the throwers. Settles down there. Benelli Brondex has a couple of looks. Back to Bath. Everyone cutting away from her. Jarman finally comes under. There's a couple of looks, moves her defender around. Kakutin finds Lane. Back to Brunelli Brondex. Good shot through the middle, and there was a pick called. And that is, of course, that's going to be a turnover. Yeah. It's yeah, too it's bad. Aurora were building to something oh, there. The timing of that pick call just got to Sandy Chow, I think, and she's put it down. But unfortunately, that the outcome of the throw stands. Aurora 
draw it back with this zone defense. Yeah. Hills have 64 meters and 0.3 of a degree to move upfield. Lamb over the top. Perkins, the danger thrower here. Chow, straight into the waiting hands of Bath. Lane. Bath, Bath doesn't need to be asked twice to catch the Frisbee. Yep. Walker's running away from her. She's having a good long look upfield. Finally spots Chow as secure as this one. Bath doing the work now. Lane's going upfield, but it's beautiful read by Hernandez. She, know, she knew that that was going to be the play. Put herself in the way and got a nice clean block. Puts a long shot looking for Lamb, but Bass come in and it's gone a couple over the top and a foul's been called. There was a bit of contact on the way through. Jessica Chow. She's gone up, but I think they're just going to call that uncontested. Which I think yeah. is the right call. Bit of a clip. I think I'll have a chat about how that played out, but I think... See game of Isaac Ruby Berg walking over. We'll listen in. Okay. If it's a if it's in if it's in an attempt to try and catch the disc yeah. and it's an uncontested foul, then the receiver gets possession. Okay. If you're not sure if they would have got the disc, then you can contest on the grounds that you don't think they would have caught it. So, yeah, sounds like it's contested. Yeah, just to make yep. Sure. So, back to where you were when the disc was thrown. Uncontested foul. Still count? Contested foul. Contested foul. Seems a reasonable outcome it's there. Just, yeah, they weren't sort of sure what the outcome would have been had the contact not occurred. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you can't predict the future. Um, mm, if only... I mean, Bath's contention was that the disc had sort of gone well beyond yeah. both of them anyway. But, I mean, yeah. you know... As, I thought it was, an, it was almost, could have been a bit of a cartoon-esque play. I thought maybe Bath had slipped through without any <laughs> contact at all and the two villains had crashed into each other. Yeah. But no, it was nice and clean, but we'll uh, send over to Daniel Clinton as we go into another timeout. Well, we have our next semi-finalist. It's Factory. They're through. They win 15-5 on the far field. Meanwhile, Tempest just broke underground for 10 and then underground answered back with their 10th goal, so 10 all right there. Well, we a couple of really hotly contested games. That's happening just on the next field over too. So if this game happens, I don't think this game will wind up early. But if it does, we'll have a peek in when we can. But so I'm just going to double check this. But um, yeah. So it looks like so we've confirmed one of the women's semis finals will be Zig Theory versus Factory Frenzy. That is locked away. But obviously we've got two more quarterfinals to determine the outcome of the other semi-final. Of course, we'll be bringing you one of the semi-finals tomorrow morning. Followed by the open semi and the women's final, the open final. Big day of ultimate. On KO, your KO freebie for a Sunday afternoon. For international viewers, wherever you are around the world, thank you for joining us on ulti.tv. And so the clock is going to tick up to 80 minutes. Of course, this clock on the screen, not the official game clock. You'll hear a, you'll hear a siren in the background and what that will mean. So at the moment, it's game to 15. But when the siren goes, we finish the point that's underway. So likely we'll have to get to the end of this goal. Then the score cap reduces to one higher than the current total. So the story, if Hill score this goal, it will be a game to 14 and they will hold a three goal lead. If NSU get this one, it'll be a game to 13. With Hills having a two goal lead. And there we go. There's the siren. So it'll be completion at this point. And we'll decide our new score cap. So, out of a timeout, offense sets first. Once they are set, they cannot move. And defense are able to set after that. So, bit of positioning going on. There. Oh, yep. So they've got, NSU have got two 
defenders sitting off the back, ready for that long shot. And then two cars sitting under. Lamb recognises their space at the front. Sorry, Lynn. Big loopy throw, a couple of goes at it. And Hernandez comes down with it again. Sends the big backhand up. It's three on three. Everyone wants a piece of it, but Coming in from the low side, had the advantage, the best read on it, says thank you, that's mine, ciao. Using her height advantage well. Taking her time, not much happening towards her. She's gonna have to engage her dump, looks up field for a long time. Not the greatest of choices. And it'll be Hill's disc. Catalina Hernandez, just under halfway, just about halfway from goal, so about 34 metres to progress the disc. 36 now, she goes backwards to Perkins. Not much happening ahead of her, just nothing towards the disc. I think all her downfield players want the longer throw. It's gone over the top, Jarman pulls out of that one and lets Lim have it. Hernandez charging up the line. That's one look up field, big bladey shot. Who wants this one? And that is into the lap of Jean. Sets her pivot foot on the line. She's looked backwards at Perkins. Perkins can't get free, so she goes back to Lim. No one moving. Finally, Catalina Hernandez says, right, I'll do it then. Jab step forward, angled backwards. Yeah. Catalina Hernandez said that a few times throughout that point. Yeah. I'll get it done. She it, stepped up. We're at the end of a very long day and it comes down to not just physical strength but also mental toughness, that resilience to put those extra efforts in. We really see, This is where you really see the senior players step up and Hernandez really took control of the offense that point and kept the advantage. We see that D from Jarman. So the story is, it is 13-10 to Hills. First to 14 will make the semi-finals of the Australian Ultimate Championships Division 2. Daniel, what have you seen? What's happening over there? Well, it's a game to 12. Uh, Underground just broke back uh, Tempest, so they're in front, they're in the box seat. They need to score one more, they'll go into the semis. Right, oh, no, two for it. It's been two absolutely cracking quarterfinals we've had today. The open quarterfinals happening tomorrow morning. We've got the Victorian Derby, the last two Division II finals, Geelong versus Fat Chili. This time it's a quarterfinal. We have the winner of that will play the winner of Status Quo versus Branch in the semi. Then we have Fishwick Unit versus Fresh Chili, Ironbark versus Manly. We'll give you updates on those throughout the day tomorrow morning. Lane, unguarded, so has no store count, sends it long. Looking for Leon. Leon gets it just ahead of Foster. 10 minutes from goal, puts a leading pass out to Bath. <laughs> Had to be Bath. She's really pushed herself <laughs> into the latter end of this game. She's had a very good game. Supremely confident to catch that one. Just to leave the ground, go up with one hand, and then just the body control to land it inbound. So. Yeah, and a, a pinpoint throw from Kendall Lane. Yeah. To hit the hit the very fast running Leon. Yeah, not sure what happened with the Hills defense there. Just if there's one play you're gonna leave unguarded, you want to make sure it's not Kendall Lane. <laughs> oh, Foster, so close to that one. Did the work, but and there she was having another go at that one. So can't fault the effort from Hills on that one. Just too good offense from NSU. So. It's a great position to catch a frisbee if you're ready for a celebration. Uh, it looks like that other quarterfinals over, Daniel. Yeah, underground to three, they win in the, what was a very close one, 12-10, the final score. We have a couple of local derbies in the semi-final. Uh, looks like we've got it uh, underground versus the winner of this game in one semi-final. Then we have Zig Theory versus Factory in the other. We'll be bringing you one of those tomorrow morning. But more importantly now, Aurora. Playing defense for their lives. Get the disc, the game stays alive. Hills. Ricard's Tang with a great rundown off that pool. Yeah, Perkins, Milo, guys like Giesler, sorry, they're just going to work it among themselves. They're in no rush at all. There's no game clock here. It's about scoring that last winning goal. Chow. Giesler. 
Chow again, happy to take those yards. Big oh. run through, doesn't quite get it. Poon has a look upfield. Milo's got it. She's got both sides of the end zone to look at. Decides to go backwards. Huge grab by Chow there, keeps it alive. Perkins, she's got a wide open look. Who wants it? And she have got to that top side. She pops it over the top. Gabby Mello, easy as you like. The two-footed goal. And Hills have taken out the win. Ever the professional. Getting the job done. Keeps her feet behind the line in the end zone. And so a fantastic comeback almost there. Well, it wasn't really a comeback. They were still, they took the lead just after half and managed to hang on to it and extend it. I think experience really won the day here. Uh, Leanne, I don't think you can really fault anything NSU did. Just those little one percenters that the players who have been playing for long enough will just get the advantage there. Yeah, if you were to look at the average years of experience on these two teams, the difference would be quite significant. So Aurora have done themselves very proud to play themselves into this game and the whole tournament, really. And so we'll come to wrap up a second day, a fantastic ultimate Frisbee here from Nelson Bay, New South Wales at the Australian Ultimate Championships Division 2. We're going to head down to Daniel Clanton, who's got Sarah Perkins from the winning team. I do have Sarah Perkins here. <laughs> Perko, uh, a great win for the girls. Yeah, it was really good. Um, obviously, tough start being down a couple of breaks, but we knew that as long as we played our game, exploited the deep and just didn't get too stressed out like we did in the first couple of points giving away in the end zone we knew we were going to have it we knew we could generate turns it was just up to us whether or not we could put it away so and yeah. now it's up to you to win a, a semi-final is this uh, the year for hills to go back to back well i hope so we've obviously got it's like such an even competition like if you look in pool play there were so many people beating each other and so many three-way ties so it's going to be a really good matchup i think uh, i don't know who we're versing yet but it'll be a good game regardless and then Hopefully onto the final. Well, thank you, Sarah, for your no time. Promise. Good luck. And uh, we'll see you next time. Simon, back to you. Thanks, Daniel. Leanne, what are your thoughts on the day? I'm, I'm worn out. <laughs> <laughs> Just be. Almost as worn out as the players. Yeah. <laughs> it's been a big, a big day of ultimate. Really lots of closely contested games. Right. You can see the standard is improving across the women's Division 2. So thanks for joining us for day two. We're back on again tomorrow, whether you want to watch live or on demand. Live will be on from 8.30 a.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time. About 15 and a half hours from now, if you're watching overseas on Ulti.tv, where we'll have two semifinals, two finals, the big ones where they get it done. Thank you for joining us on KO Freebies. We'll see you tomorrow. It's about you! It's about your...